Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. So, today's the day I'm starting the build on the kit of the week, which is of course the glorious Blackburn Buccaneer S2 C or D in 148 scale from Airfix. Now, today I'm aiming to just do the front section, the nose section, so all of the cockpit, which is quite a lot of detail, ejection seats, and of course the nose section itself and the nose weights. Let's not forget that. The build will take you know, three, four more days after that as well. So come back each day for a new video, but today it's the nose. If you enjoy the video, and I hope you do, do please remember to give it the thumbs up as a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already for more builds and other projects I've been involved in. If you enjoy it, really a lot and you fancy giving a bit of concrete support can do that through any of the partner programs in the box below or of course through super thanks so i know we've all been wanting to build one of these let's get on with it let's waste no more time and have a look at building the buccaneer in 148 scale from airfix okay so instructions and the first thing we have to do is decide which weapons load we're having for the different schemes I'm going with scheme A, the box art scheme. I don't know why really. I'm, it's got the Martel missiles, I guess. Um, if they release another one of these as the RAF aircraft, which I imagine they will, I suspect they'll have them with essentially a full rack of bombs. They certainly supply enough of them. So this time around, Royal Navy late model aircraft is going to be scheme A with the Martel missiles. And the reason why I need to know that now is that it tells you in here where all the drill points are before you assemble the wings. So we must remember to do that in a bit. The other thing new in this uh, new set of instructions is that all of the internal decals, all of the instrument panels and all that, they've all got quite detailed placements and also where you need to paint in background details for the decals to sit on. I think this is a lovely move and it's um, again it's the product of people who care about how to make models rather than people making models if you see what I mean. The other thing I normally do especially on FX kits at the beginning is I go through all, all the colour call outs for the seats and things like that. I go in and write down what they actually are because I'm not going to remember that 155 is olive drab or 2 is head emerald gloss let's look that one up so i just uh, double check all the colors most of the inside is this 165 medium sea gray so i'll get hold of some of that and start painting the interior and i need some light aircraft gray 166 i need khaki drab olive drab black obviously um yellow and red and black for the ejection seat initiators yeah that's all for this page most of the interior of the aircraft is 165 matte, medium C grey, and so it gives me a chance to try out the Gen 2 acrylics. We were given one of these when we were at Airfix the other day, so I'll have a look and see how this goes. So I'll start spraying some of the uh, interior parts now. So next we're going to start adding a few bits of black to the instrument panels according to the instruction sheet. So when the black and the grey has set, what I'm going to do is just very, very gently dry brush some white on top just to pick out these instrument details I use a I use the thick sort of um, really thick Vallejo white and just a number zero humbrol brush and just it almost dry on the brush very nearly and then just feather light across and just picks out all this relief it really takes seconds and it gives so much detail it's brilliant don't forget to zoom more than one direction as well because you'll you'll pick up details from other directions that you can't 
otherwise. Also gives a bit of a worn look to some of the instruments, which is fantastic. Okay, onto the ejection seats now, and you'll notice that there are three of them. Um, these two are essentially identical. This one is slightly different. It's got a smaller tab at the back here. Um, this is the front seat. I think there's a, it's the panel that sits on the, the navigator's panel that sits on the back of this. Maybe that's what's different between uh, this and a later version. Maybe a later version has a different tab for a different navigator's panel behind them. But for the moment, at least, this is the pilot seat and this or this is the navigator seat. Okay, so first of all, the two halves of the seat back, the seat structure, go together. There are some locator pins, it's just my rather chubby fingers. You know, just some days when your fingers just feel like about six times bigger than they did the day before. I don't know what it is. There we go. There we are. So there, there's the seat back assembly, like that. So next, the bottom cushion goes in place. There's a little tab that secures it in the right spot so that you have to get it over. Push it right to the back to get in there. There we go. Like that. So it sits right at the very back. Then next at the top of the back insert on the ejection seat is this pin I guess it's part of the the um, canopy oh, canopy the rigging for the parachute I think goes in the top part of the top box rigging of the parachute there then that takes its place on the back again there's a locator tab it slots into further down there we go like that and then the initiator handle it's got like this hooky sort of thing that hook goes down into the back like so just pushes into place and the top bar here fit, fits across this piece like that okay so that's the initiator handle in place Now they're all done, I can start painting the ejection seats. All the colours are listed in the instructions, of course. And just paint them up first, and then we'll do a little bit of weathering in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of detailing on the seats um, for the black painted parts there's two ways to do this you can either undercoat it with aluminium and then put a tub coat of black on and then just rub the black away a bit like what happens in real life or you can do what i'm going to do today which is dry brush but dry brush with aluminium just be really careful how this goes on and it works just like with white you know it just highlights stuff makes it look a little bit more warm and you can put more or less as you wish, depending on, on what the effect is you want. If it, you know, a lot of um, injection seats in places like museums look really rough, but you know, these things were serviced fairly regularly, so I don't think they got too rough in actual use. But just, just enough to give it some detail. Pick out some of these rivets down the side here. I mean, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure we'll ever see these, but it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? it, it you know, everything we do is because it looks cool, all right? Everything we try and do is because it's going to look cool. There's no point doing stuff if it ain't going to look cool. Is my mantra. It's my motto in life. Always try and look cool. Um, it's especially good around on this side where you've got the um, these gas bottles and things like that and lots of rivets it just brings it just brings out the edge that just plain old black ain't gonna do so nice dark wash here to go in just put it on 
sort of quite roughly to begin with and then we can wash it back and rinse it back and settle it down in a minute it's just stuff that until you put something like varnish on it it's it's permanently movable which is really nice all right so those are my ejection seats completed um let's uh, get on with the rest of the cockpit now but there's this little piece that goes into the back of the uh, navigator's instrument cluster and the piece goes in here. Note that it's offset, so up and to the right is the offset and that's where it has to be, okay? Alright, so what I'm going to do now is put on the decals on all of the instrument panels because um, it's getting quite close to where we start putting the whole lot together. So I want to get these done, get them uh, into place, get them sitting nicely and also get them varnished so they sit still. So first of all, we are going to use some setting solution. Now, I use um, the Staff Microset uh, Decal Fix works well. One thing I've noticed, okay, I, I always have this on, on the side and I poke the brush in it. I notice that quite often the top of this ferrule clicks onto that and pulls it over and I lose it. So if you're as clumsy as I am, only keep a little bit in the bottom of a jar. Put the rest somewhere else until you've emptied a jar and then always just top up a little amount into the jar or learn not to be so bleeding clumsy, one of the two. Okay, anyway, so we'll just coax the instrument decal into place here around a little bit these things are enormously satisfying when when um, when they all sit properly they can be very satisfying they can be really annoying otherwise but they can be very very satisfying there you go that's that's that one and um, we'll just go through the rest of the uh, control panels now and do all of the rest Right, so now it's the, um, it's the harnesses. Now, Paramjet, who designed this kit, so we should know what it's talking about, says we need some foil about the thickness of the sort of foil you get on a wine bottle. So, here it is. Um, most of the wine bottles I get recently have either been screw tops or plastic, so, um, Probably, uh, maybe maybe Paramjit drinks better wine than I do. I don't know. Anyway, I don't even know if he drinks wine, to be honest with you. This is the uh, a foil from a bottle of wine I did have. And we're just going to flatten it out a bit. And I'm guessing we have to prime it. I don't know. Um, it, it didn't say whether we had to prime it or not. I guess we have to prime it. So I'll put some primer on anyway, um, because it gives something for the decals to stick to when we try and put them on. Right, so I've, I've given it a, a very rough brushed coat of uh, gray primer on here. I'm just gonna give it another wash here of decal setting solution. And then we're going to get the decals. This is such a weird thing to be doing, I have to say. So, here they are, here are the decals of the straps and harnesses and whatever. Then these are the straps as well, put those on. And I guess we just let them dry. Um, Uh, it's it's just a very strange feeling doing this. I'll just give it a, another wash of decal solution just to make sure they they really stick properly. I, I'm just I'm very um, confused about this idea, but we'll see how we go. Now I'm going to leave those to dry for a long time. I'm going to be getting on with a lot of other things first. I've got the rest of the cockpit to build, for example, so I'll get on with that. Just joining the uh, 
nose gear bay to the bottom of the fuselage and there's this tiny bit of plastic here just needs to come off it's a bit of a part of an ejector pin Do you know it's the first ejector pin i've noticed with any problems all the rest of them seem well sort of recessed almost um or it, it's almost like someone's gone round and individually cleaned them up i'll show what i mean later on anyway this piece now just has to sit on the bottom like that so i'll just glue that up and the the rear of the gear bay slots on like so the back here there we go like that okay so now we start putting some of these panels into the cockpit area and just sort of click into place for the moment that should do fit extremely well i have to say there we go now i'll just use a dash of um, ultra thin on the edge there just to bond them in then these upright instrument panels almost upright instrument panels can slot in as well you can see they've got an angle backwards on it and then this is side panel that slots in here there we go and on the back of the pilot's control panel goes this i assume it's the rudder box but i have to say the rudders are absolutely enormous that's so about like half a meter tall there then the pilot's control column slots in here it always reminds me of the um the gear lever on a 2cv actually citroen 2cv and as some of you at least who are watching will know what i mean and a one certainly will won't you guy you know what I mean. Um, there it is. That's the control column in place. But now the rear wall of the cockpit goes in. And notice it says this tiny decal that goes in as well. Remember to put that on. Then the pilot's panel goes in place with the rudder and the joystick. Now, only it says there's only to glue at the bottom, not up here at the top. It says only glue down at the bottom. I don't know why, but they say to do it that way, so that's the way I am going to do it. Now the navigator's ejection seat goes in, slots into there to give it the right height and position. And you'll notice it is sort of skewed to one side. That's absolutely intentional because on the Buccaneer, the nav sat on this side and the uh, pilot on this side. Very slightly offset, but it's an offset nonetheless. It's very important to have it there. Then the pilot seat attaches to the navigator's console like this. And then that whole assembly sits into the aircraft like so there we go well, and i know fx say on their their blog the roomy cabin it ain't that roomy i have to say it's pretty snug i remember a pilot telling me once you you sort of climb into a phantom you strap on a buccaneer I'm just going to add a little bit more um, detailing here, especially on the throttle quadrants, because they're moulded into the actual cockpit tub. We couldn't really see those earlier on, so we'll just give those a bit of detail. And this stuff at the back here, give that a bit of um, a bit shading. Okay, here's the, this is the bucket that goes into the nose to carry the weights so that the buccaneer will sit nicely on its nose wheel as it should do um when it's dry and i've put 15 grams it says 15 grams then 
you close it with this. This is great if you're using something like liquid graffiti. You can just pour it into however much you want and then just seal it up and it's not going anywhere, which is fantastic. Or of course, you can just fill it with whatever your weights of choice are. Um, you know, fishing weights or lead shot or anything you like. 15 grams is what we need. So what I've got here are some uh, lead shot. Uh, these, these are the sort of things you use to make up uh, diving belts if you're a scuba diver. They're very cheap to buy online. Obviously not the most efficient packing. The uh, random spherical packing is not the best. You can sort of crush them up and make them more dense if you like, or you can hammer them out, whatever. Or put in a fishing weight that's the right size, anything you like. Um, this filled up is actually 16 grams, so that's absolutely spot on for me. And I can just put the back on, and there we are. There's my nose weight all nicely done. While we're waiting for the nose weight and the cockpit to set up, we'll drill the holes for the crew ladders later. If you're not putting crew ladders on, then don't bother, obviously. What you have to do is drill at 90 degrees to the line of the middle, like that, yeah? So it's absolutely horizontal. That's because the pegs on the part are horizontal, so you have the hole has to go through horizontally, like so. These holes are one millimeter in diameter. Then there's some more small instrument panels that go in along the sides as well. Sorry, you might miss those. I was looking at this and not at my phone screen. So yeah, there's one, two, and three. Okay. And I'm just gonna just give a quick wash in here as well, just to bring out these details a bit. This dries quite it doesn't dry all that dark, so I just want to get these bits of hair off because they don't look very good. You know, they they, they dry like a, a shadow rather than a, a real inky thing. And just also, just for a bit of colour more than anything else, it's also very grey and black in there, isn't it? I'm just going to add just a very, very, very fine brown wash to make it look a bit old and a bit used. So we'll put the nose together now. So first thing is the nose weight goes in. Now you can see here it fills most of the nose. I was asking Pamjet why they didn't do a folding nose option on this because the, in fact you can see there's a hinge here and the whole nose would rotate back partly to give access to the radar equipment but mostly to make it just a little bit shorter so it would fit on the lifts of the older aircraft carriers like Hermes and Eagle. Um, the, without the nose folding back and without the air brakes folding fully like 180 degrees open, the Buccaneer wouldn't have fit in the lifts and wouldn't have been purchased. So there we go, that's why that's there. The reason why, apparently, is it would be difficult to get the weight into the nose. And if you just sort of had a, a nose section, you, you could say, oh, well, we can fill that. In fact, it would be a little less because it would be a bit further forward. Paramjit's problem then was when you hinged it back, A, the weight is, still, is gone further back and there's not enough to keep it down. But also, there's going to be a lot of the weight on the hinge and they weren't sure that the hinge would sit straight if you weighted down the nose section on the hinge. So all of those things taken together, plus the fact he was already way over parts budget, um, he had more parts than the 124th Spitfire at this point, meant that he couldn't do a folded back nose, which is a real pity, the radar. I mean, you do get some of uh, the Phantom kit does it, but unfortunately this one doesn't. Anyway. That's the weight in the nose. The next thing we have to do is put the cockpit in. And so we'll just put a dab of glue down here, because that's gonna hold it in place. And then dab of glue down there. Okay, now what we have to do 
is put this into place like so line everything up and then push until it clicks okay when it clicks all of these bits are lined up and everything is absolutely sturdy it does look good this cockpit Do you know it is a real pity to put the other half on in so many ways oh, it's so nice okay so then we get ready to put the other half on now what I'm going to do is just put um, regular glue on actually I'll do it on this side in the holes because I'm going to use um, ultra thin glue to actually bond the joints together but I just use these to hold it in place while I do it okay so these two halves go together there we go oh. and again you have to get these lined up here so click in place you hear that click clicked in place there we go so that's all lined up that's all lined up that's all lined up what we need to do now is tape this up and get the fuselages as close as we can to being um, in line and then ultra thin glue all over it and see how we get on there's also this front combing to do um, in front of the pilot it's got to be black because it's anti-glare there's lots of bits and pieces on there so what we'll do is we'll paint it all black first and then we'll do a little bit of dry brushing to pull out some of the edges of like these extra dials and bits and pieces all over the place at the front the instructions say to put in the gun sight or bomb sight at this point I'm not going to do that because I will knock it. I'll absolutely make a mess of it whilst I'm doing other things. I'll put it in just before I put in the windshield. I promise you I'll remember. Honest I will. I most definitely won't forget to put that in before I put the windshield on. Again, just dry brush all these edges, all these cables. They all just sort of slightly, just sort of leap out of the black, just a bit. Just give some shading. It gives some texture, some three D feel to all these bits and pieces and it makes it easier to see them otherwise you're just black so that's a dry brushing really really good technique to practice instantly but one, one thing I, I've noticed if you're um if you want to see what your dry whether your dry brushing is going to work whether your paints are right or whatever try it on the numbers on the sprue for example if you can pick out the numbers like that on the sprue then your consistency and your technique is absolutely spot on yeah so that's, that's actually a really really good way of practicing so there we go then the then the combing can fit into the front of the cockpit it's going to need to sit just there Okay, so what you've got, it just sits inside the line of where the windshield will sit. There's going to be a little gap there that's going to be covered up with the windshield. Um, but that's the front combing complete. And that is, once we've um, done the panel lines, of course, once we've done the seams here, that is the front end pretty much finished, apart from the glazing. So that's cool. I think it looks beautiful. You can see the stagger in the seats pilots one side nav to the other um, the instrument set looks great um, yeah 
Not a bad job, actually, Gary. Not a bad job, mate. There we go. Um, before I finish for today, I want to start um, looking at these panel lines. These, these well, not panel lines, are they? They're the seams here. Um, I'm just going to run over quickly with a 400 grit sanding stick. Now, this is one reason why I spray everything first is that it makes it easier to see where the gaps are on panel lines when you sort of gently gently sand the edges you can see where the gaps are and what side is the higher bit so you know which side to fill and then which side to work down to once the decals have dried you have to cut them out of the foil a lot easier said than done There it is, all neatly cut out. Just another one to do then. I think if I had any advice about this, I would say cut out this middle bit first, whilst everything else is there, because otherwise it's very difficult to cut out um, when you've already done the other straps, because it just makes it quite weak around there. So cut that out first and then just work your way around. So there we go. Um, cut out from the foil, the main uh, harnesses and the shoulder straps or top straps. Um, do I have another piece of advice for you? Yes, I do. Remember to do this before you've made the rest of the cockpit because putting these into the cockpit now is going to be a challenge. But we'll do it. We will do it. Just wait. Well, after a little bit of cajoling, a little bit of effort, it goes in okay. Um, just need to do the top straps and then um, do the front seat as well. Do, do do it the right way around. It's so much easier. Okay, so look, they're not perfect. They're not perfect because I should have done them when they were out of the cockpit and not afterwards, but do you know what? I think they'll do. I think they will do. There we go then. That's day one complete. The nose section is done. I think it looks lovely. I really, really enjoyed doing it. I didn't enjoy forgetting the straps. Please do remember every step to double check everything you're doing. The, the straps are quite a small uh, side thing. I want one picture's got the, the decals going on. If you're doing it this way with the foil, by the way, which works, Paramjit, what a great tip. Thanks so much for that. If you're going to do that, it's a bit more involved than just slapping a few decals on. Okay, so you have to put them on the screen, cut them out, fit them. Remember to do that before you put the seats in. That's my best advice. Anyway, come back again. We'll be starting on the fuselage next, that lovely open engine. And um, let's get some flesh on the bones of this buccaneer. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Hope if you have, please do remember, thumbs up and subscribe as well if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.